kiddos, come on up to sing. Come on, kids, let's go sing.
Light, Bud Crosswhite, Gene Buchanan, Daniel Rice, Vienna Moore, Unspoken, Jamie Thomas, Israel, Ronnie Henson, Teresa Riley, Sheriff's Department, and Commissioners. Anybody else? Is that it? That's it. Any birthdays coming up? Aubrey's. Where's Aubrey? Get up here. Anybody else? Is that it? Yeah, come on up here. This could be the worst week of the year right here. No, could be. <laughs> Everybody with us think happy to sing happy. Thank you. 
friend with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the, uh, and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. And therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years have a famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in, the, in which there shall neither be hearing nor harvest. That's for every father to say, Lord, come on, shepherd, Lord, baby. Lord, I thank you for another day, another opportunity to be out in the presence of your house and your people. And I pray now, dear Heavenly Father, that every word that's spoken out of my mouth will be straight from you. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you'll give the right word to Stephen for the people that's in this house or tuning in online. I, I pray, God, that you'll just touch and move the way only you can. I pray, God, you'll help us to realize and remember how good you are. And I really pray tonight, dear God, today, dear God, that you'll just touch hearts. Lord, get them out of the pews and get them on an altar where they can get things right. I pray, dear God, that there'll be somebody here today that's lost and undone. They'll be saved before they leave. I pray, God, that somebody's burdened, they'll lay it down. I pray, dear God, for the restoration, they'll be restored today. Be there a name and every burden, God, that's on people's hearts today. Not only those that we've been granted on our prayer list, uh, but God, I know many of us today have certain things that's on our heart. God, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to move and work here at Heavenly Life Baptist Church. Help it to grow and to prosper, be the light that you want it to be. Uh, Lord, help us to reach out into a not lost and dying community uh, and see souls saved and lives changed, God. We give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and honor, our will be done with mine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, here's a story uh, uh, toward the end of the story of Joseph uh, uh, in his life. If you don't know much about Joseph and what led up to this story here, uh, then we want to give you just a little background real quick and then we'll move on. Uh, Joseph had some brethren, uh, and his brethren didn't care nothing for him. Amen. The uh, Bible tells us we, we probably remember a little story uh, back from our uh, Sunday school days, uh, uh, the story of Joseph. Joseph and the coat of many coats. Uh, and we know his father had made him that coat. Brothers were jealous of that coat. Uh, they didn't care nothing for that. The, the, he had 11 other brothers there. They didn't like what was happening. We know this to be uh, uh, tribes here. Uh, but we see here that they wear. Uh, uh, the brother didn't like this and they got a little jealous. And when he, 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 they sort of felt like that Joseph was the father's favorite. Amen. Uh, listen, let me just tell you something. Being a father of uh, boys. Uh, listen, you cannot choose between the two. Amen. Uh, if you have children, you love them the same. Uh, some of them may do the right thing. Some may not. Uh, but you still love them. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, Joseph was uh, being accused of some things and done some things with his brethren and sold him off uh, into slavery. Uh, and they sold him. We know the story of Joseph uh, and how, how he, he was not only thrown in the ditch and then one of the brethren came back uh, and got him out of the ditch. Uh, and then they said, hey, why should we leave him in the ditch when we could sell him off? Amen. Uh, and they sold him off in the, in, in, to some gypsies. Uh, and the gypsies took him down and sold him into Egypt there. He became uh, uh, the, house, uh, the head of the house there for a captain. Uh, and when he became that head of the captain, the captain's wife accused him of some things that he would not do because he would not lie with her. Uh, uh, and he was thrown in prison. Uh, and he was able to, uh, uh, he was in prison for a while. He found out he was able to interpret some dreams. Uh, he had reached the place he had got because uh, he had interpreted some dreams for the king, which was Pharaoh. Uh, and that he had interpreted a dream there and told Pharaoh that there's going to be seven years of drought. Amen. Uh, seven years of hard times. Uh, Joseph had been down, uh, beaten, and thrown in prison. Amen. Uh, mistreated by his relatives, uh, mistreated by his so-called friends who were, he helped out while he was in prison to get out of prison. Uh, the, the, the baker and the butler, uh, he helped them to uh, interpret 
some dreams and helped them to get out of, out of jail early. And he was forgotten about by them. But, hey, we might be here today and you might have been forgotten about. But you might have been through some hard times. You might have been through some things. But I can tell you what, we've not all been with men. We've not been through half of what these people in the Bible have been through. Amen. And here's what I want to tell you about them. They knew how to bounce back. Amen. They knew how to come through these things because they had someone to help them get through. Here's what I was thinking. I know we're getting ready to go into basketball season. I know we've got some boys and girls in here that like to play basketball. We've got some in here that's been around basketball. Hey, and I got to thinking about this, about rebound. Amen. Now, you know what the word rebound means? It means to bounce back or when something hits something, it bounces back. If I was to ask you a question today, who's the best rebounder of all time? I, I know all of you is going to probably have somebody in your mind. I, I know somebody, you're going to have different thoughts in your mind. I, but I'm going to tell you right now, I, I know who you think. I've just seen you mumble it right now. I, but I can promise you this, he ain't even close. So, not even close, but you look statistically. I, you need to look it up. He ain't even halfway to the top, amen. I, I can tell you right now, I, all of us today have somebody in our mind about who could be the best rebounder. But there's some successful things. That, that, there's some things that make a successful rebounder. Amen. Uh, uh, just like in the game of basketball. Uh, just like in life. Amen. Uh, it's not about uh, how big you are. Uh, it's not about how wide you are. Uh, but it's all about a lot of other things that take place. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of other things that have to happen uh, for you and for us. Uh, Hey, to be able to be to be able to rebound when things happen, amen. I, I was thinking a while back uh, uh, when the Lord began to deal with us a while back on this side uh, about what does it take to be a good rebounder in basketball. Uh, the first thing it takes uh, is to be able to have an inside position, amen. Uh, in other words, you need to have an inside position to be able to rebound. Now, if the ball's coming off the rim, uh, then you want to make sure that you've got yourself uh, in between uh, the ball and, the, and your defender, uh, the one you're trying to keep from getting the ball, right? Amen. Uh, you want me to tell you what about how that relates over to our spiritual life? Uh, it relates exactly the same way. Uh, let me just tell you right now, uh, you'll never be able to fight off the devil unless you've got him living on the inside. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you, there has to be somebody between me and him. There has to be somebody that gives me strength. There has to be somebody that gives me help because I am no match for the devil. I'm here to tell you today, you've probably been trying to your best to fight off and to warn off the devil. His temptation his trials in your life. Hey, I'm going to tell you, you'll never be able to do it on your own. I'm glad I've got somebody on the inside. Hey, that is greater than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me because he is on the inside. Hey, if you're here today and you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior, you're fighting a loser. You can never win on your own. You'll never make it without God. It takes Jesus. It takes the Spirit of God. Living on the inside. Amen. And it's not something you have to go out and purchase. It was already paid for a long time ago over on town. Your debt has already been paid for. Your debt has already been sacrificed over there on Calvary. It is up to you and I. If we're, we're not in this thing. Uh, we're not going to heaven uh, hey, because that we, we've done something on our own, uh, but we're going because of what Christ did for us. Uh, you're not going to miss heaven uh, because you didn't have enough money to pay for it. Uh, you're not going to miss heaven today uh, because you can't. You didn't do enough good deeds. Uh, you didn't do enough. Uh, you're not going to heaven today uh, because you've done too many bad things. Uh, you're not going. Uh, uh, you're not going to miss heaven. Uh, because you are not 
gospel that is good enough. You go to this heaven because you never give your life to God and let him move in. You know what you got to do to get the Lord to move into your life? Just ask. He said, you have not because you ask not. Amen. You've got to have an inside position. I see a lot of small people, short people, little people, out rebound big fellas. Why? Because they were on the inside. Hey Amen. I'm gonna be on I'm on the inside of you. It's hard enough to battle. It's hard enough to battle when you get the inside position, hey amen. I can't imagine having that, uh, uh, being on the outside, uh, being on the outside trying to get in. And uh, you want to know what happens when you're on the outside uh, and you try to get in uh, uh, without it, hey amen? Uh, I'll tell you what happens in basketball. Uh, hey, if you're in basketball, somebody's got inside position on you, uh, you both go up for a ball, uh, hey, and you try to get in without, get, without being in the right place. Uh, you know what happens? Uh, you do that enough, you're going to be set down they play it no more. Amen. I can tell you right now, I'm glad I'm on the inside. I know I'm where I'm headed to. I know where I'm headed to. I know who is in me. Amen. Amen. So when tough times come, when things happen in our life, I promise you things are going to happen in your life. I promise you that you're going to see bad days. There's, we live in a fallen world. Amen? <clears throat> we live in a world that wants to kill and destroy us. We're going to have, we live in that place, uh, hey, where the world wants to take from us. I'm glad to know that I'm on the inside. Amen? Uh, hey, how much harder would it be uh, to fight from the outside uh, those things that are trying to attack? Uh, I'm glad I've got somebody. Uh, I, it's not hard for me to call him. Uh, it's not hard for me to get a hold of him. Uh, hey, because he is near. Uh, I can keep him as near as I wanted to. Uh, Bible said if you'll draw nigh unto him, uh, he'll draw nigh unto thee. Uh, I'm glad I've got somebody. Body that I can count on. Hey man, I'm glad I've got somebody that's going to be there. <laughs> and you, hey man, I was thinking I'm glad I've got somebody that all I got to say, hey dad, hey dad, I got something going on. I got something happening. I'm on the inside, hey man. I ain't got to run look for him. I ain't got to try to. Find out where he's at, but he's right there. Amen. Glory to God. What a God we serve. I'm glad I got somebody on the inside. Now, you want to know how, you want to know what the bit hardest thing is sometimes for us. You want to know what we've got to do sometimes to avoid the temptation. Look, young folks. Hey, I promise you, the devil's gonna tempt you with everything. You let you go to school up there, you uh, around folks. Hey, that live in the world every day. They're gonna offer you things. They're gonna try to tempt you to try things. You want to know how hard it is to get out of that? It's as easy as this. No. Hey, man, listen. You've got family. You've got friends. You've got brothers. You've got sisters. You've got moms and dads. Hey, you've got a pastor. Hey, that cares for you. You've got somebody here for you. But better than that, you've got Christ living on the inside. It's going to be a whole lot easier to say no. Hey, man, it's going to be a whole lot easier to say no. But we've got him on the inside of us. Because we already know what we're supposed to do. Amen. We already know what we're supposed to do. I can think here, I was thinking about this this morning. I woke up earlier this morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning. I got this thought on my mind. It didn't have nothing to do with this message, but I'm going to preach it anyway. I was thinking here about this, about Mount Joseph. When you read the rest of the scripture there, the rest of that chapter there, you'll find out toward the end of that chapter that Joseph told his brethren to go get his father. You want to know where his father was? His father was down in Canaan. You know what Canaan is? Canaan was the land that God had promised his people. 
It was, the, it was God's promise. It was the Jews' promised land that from God. That, let me tell you, I got this thought on my mind this morning. That, hey, there's a lot of times uh, people can be right here in the very church house. Uh, they can be right where God wants them to be. Uh, they can be right where they're supposed to be uh, and still not be able to get a hold of God. Uh, still not be near God. Uh, still not be right with God. Uh, hey, Joseph's brother was down the land of Canada. Uh, Canada uh, and they sold their brother off. You think that was the right thing? Uh, I know it worked out. Uh, I know God took the thing and used it for a blessing. Hey, but just because we make it, just because uh, we intend to do wrong, uh, don't think that's going God's going to work in all that. Uh, hey, I'm here to tell you today, uh, you might be in the church house today, uh, looking on the outside, uh, trying to get on the inside. Uh, hey, you want to know why uh, Joseph's father, uh, down there in the land of Canaan, uh, was able to be brought uh, down there into the land of Egypt, uh, and not only be given enough food, uh, but be given cattle, uh, be given bread. Uh, hey, but then even below to him is because he knew somebody on the inside. Amen. Somebody on the inside was over it all. He was over all the food. He was over all the land. He was over it all. He takes up the day. It's good to have him on the inside. Hey, Amen. It's good to have him on the inside. I think something else about, about rebound. Just because you have inside position doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to succeed in retrieving the bomb. You know why? If you stand there like the one on the lot, you don't expect it to come get easy. When you, when you have inside position, you know what they're taught to do? Fox out. Huh? What do you, I heard you say before I said it, son. Look, what do you want to do? You'll make yourself bigger, right? You, you want to make yourself, you want to make it impossible for that defender to get around you. To get around you. Hey man, look, let me tell you something. If we're going to do, if we're going to defeat the devil, we're going to keep him out of our homes. We're going to keep him out of our schools. We're going to keep him out of our children's lives. We're going to keep him out of our workplace. Uh, hey, we're going to have to get bigger. Amen. Uh, we're going to have to quit worrying uh, about my four and no more. Amen. Uh, we're going to have to stop that train of thinking. Uh, hey, we're going to have to do bigger. Uh, we're going to have to think wider. Uh, hey, we want to be not only a part of, uh, not only a Christian at church. Uh, hey, I want to be a Christian uh, outside these walls. Uh, I want to get bigger. Uh, hey, not me, uh, but Christ. Uh, I want him to shout. I want to do everything I can to protect my kids. I want to do everything I can to protect my children. Then I want to do it for the just on Sunday morning. Amen. Make it bigger. Hey, man, boss him out. We go to church on Sundays. And we'll sing in the choir. And I love the choir, man. It starts to sound good. We'll go to church and sing in the choir. Then we'll go home and not come back no more until next Sunday. Listen, I don't mean to be dumb. I'm just giving you a word of advice. Amen. Look here. You might as well. This is, this is what it's like. Here's what it's like. Sunday morning, you get up, you lock the door. You leave. Monday morning, you leave and leave the door open. Not only the front door, but you leave the back door. And the windows. Hey, you may go by, you may do that for a while, but I promise you at some point, somebody will walk in and steal your shoes. You say, what's that about? I remember many years ago, we didn't have no money, we didn't have nothing, we didn't have no doors. Somebody stole our shoes. Uh, my wife's like, go down to that. I don't know if they did or not, to be honest with you. It might have been before we had kids. I don't even remember this a long time ago, but I know from that point on. We locked the doors, amen. Stole our bed sheets. Do you think of that? Not the ones on the bed. I'm talking about brand new sheets you bought. Huh? Look, you said, well, what's that important? That's all we had. Look, that's all we had. I tell you right now, you know what the devil wants? He wants all you got. Hey, he ain't going to take the dirty ones off the bed, amen. He's going to take the ones he can get. I'm telling you today, it's important hey, that we box that devil out. Not just leave it one day, but lock the doors every day. Amen. I think something else. Not only does it take inside position or, or box it out, but it takes 
takes determination. You know, it takes determination. If you want to win, if you want to gain control, you're going to be determined. Here's what I stand. Man, I remember, remember when Jason was growing up. He said, well, I, I want you to know this. And he'll be the first to test to this. I never took it easy on him. I was very hard on Jason growing up playing ball. Oh, don't think about other things, please. Very hard. And I remember this boy was determined. I, I know at some point in his life he was determined to beat that kid. Now, I never let Jason win. Now these dads that let their kids win, you teach life as easy. I understand that. I let the grandkids win. I don't know why. I know a little bit of a boy. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I remember Jason in about seventh grade. And Jason in seventh grade got as tall as I was. But I quit playing basketball in the yard of Jason in the eighth grade. In the eighth grade, we quit playing really hard in basketball. You know why? I found out he was more determined than me. Than I was. He was more determined to score on dad than dad was to score on him. He was more determined to get every loose ball than dad than dad was. Hey, let me tell you something in life uh, that goes exactly the same way. Uh, <coughs> when we get less determined uh, hey, to serve God, uh, when we get less determined uh, to study the word, uh, hey, when we get less determined uh, to pray the way we should, uh, hey, I'm telling you what the devil will do. Uh, he'll slip in, amen, uh, and he'll take over. Because uh, I promise you, uh, he's determined uh, to tear every family apart. Uh, he's determined uh, to take everybody to hell with him. Uh, I tell you what we've got to do as Christians. Uh, we've got to get fired up. Uh, and we've got to get determined uh, that we're not going to lose another one.
They need somebody to follow. Uh, hey, I want it to be you. Uh, I want it to be you. Uh, I want it to be somebody from this church. Uh, hey, they might be able to make a difference uh, up there in Johnson County Schools. Uh, I want them to be able uh, hey, to know uh, that they got that uh, from their parents uh, who are living wild like God wants them to live uh, with both hands on the ball. You're here today and you've never been saved. Would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Slip your hand up, put it right back down, say, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm lost, preacher. I'm lost. Maybe here this morning you say, preacher, I don't really know. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Would you pray for me? Just pray for me. Help me, help me find out I'm struggling to preach for me. I need to hear this morning. Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. But I, I, I'm just, I, I'm failing. I've not been doing my part. I've failed my family. I want to be, I want to be what God would have me to be. Slip your hand up and right back down. Pray for me. Pray for me. I hope today, and man, God sits all these hands. Listen, I hope today that you know that today is your day to get on this altar. Now is the accepted time. Now. Not next week, not tonight, but today. Would you come? Would you come? Altar's open today for anyone for any reason. Maybe you've got a burden on your heart. Something you'd like us to help you pray about. Sit your hand up and right back there. Say, pray for me. Amen. 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 God says, all the same today. God knows your heart today. I ask you, would you just come? Would you just come? She's getting ready to finish up. We're going to the Lord in prayer. Oh, altar's open for anyone for any reason. Anybody else need to come before we pray? Bless you.